Toyota. Good morning, Israel. <coughs> uh, good morning. JD Nigel, word of truth. <coughs> Coming to you from beautiful Bos Chica State Beach. Quiet. We're, we're having a race out here on the main highway. And there's no cars coming by. Beautiful. Nice and quiet Sunday morning. Praying you're all well. I am. So, so. But that's beside the point. Um, I'm here to study the Bible, teach the Bible, read the Bible, be with you. That's what we do here. This is a Bible. If you're, if you're new to this channel, if you're new to this channel, it's Bible teaching with Jeff Deloach. Um... So, good morning. Let me grab my beads. Oh. Heavenly Father, bless this message. Bless the ears that hear it. Bless my brothers and sisters. Let's get rolling. Let's not waste time. Um, like I do constantly. It takes me hours just to get a few lessons in. So, I'm going to try and start. I've been trying. I, I don't know. Something about the way I study. I guess that's why I retain so well. Is because I... Um, I think about things. I don't just spout shit out off the top of my head that it's going to sound good to you and make you feel all warm and fuzzy. Um, I'm trying to hurt you. <laughs> such a such an evil dude, right? Fallen angel, right, Jay Hall? Hopefully he's gone. Go go with your GMS boys, Jay Hall, you kook. Um, yeah. The rest of you, welcome. Ones of you that actually can um you got to be able to think your brain has to work really well to understand the depths of the bible and um what we see out here in these last days is there's a lot of there's a lot of people that are just smart enough to make you think that they know something but the trick to the Bible is to think that you don't know anything. You have to be humble. The Lord rewards the humble and the contrite in spirit. You have to be, you almost have to be sad to read the Bible. You have to be almost, from a, from a prophet's point of view, like myself, a fallen angel, a, an Israelite, you almost have to be completely broken to really... Um, humble yourself to understand the Bible. So hopefully some of you have been bashed around enough that you can understand what I'm saying and this is going to help you. Um, <clears throat> in the <clears throat> coming days. So I'm pretty much given up on listening to anything GMS has to say. Hebrew Israelism is as good as dead. That is probably the worst cult religion ever I mean the Mormonism's pretty odd and um, Jehovah's Witnesses are kind of odd but when you go to completely just whacked out um, black Hebrew Israelism has got to take the cake this is some weird ass negro centric bullshit that these guys push out and it um, I, <laughs> I don't know what to say stay away from it <clears throat> stay away from black hebrew israelism it is um I, I don't even know how to say it but anyway um I listen to real Bible teachers now. I'm getting away from that nonsense. It's like, wow. When you start listening to someone really talk about, like Chuck Missler or, um, 
even, yeah, <laughs> even Joel Osteen sounds good compared to these idiots. Um, Tahar and Gabar, they, they know some stuff, but it's not right. So anyway, what I was studying last night was um, Chuck Missler was pointing out some things about Joseph, the son of the 11th son of Jacob, and how Joseph had all the power in Egypt, his brothers. His brothers threw him in a pit because they they were jealous of him. So we look at the two brothers. I'm gonna try and get this. There's there's a lot of different things that go on here. I'm I'm not very good sometimes when it's such a spread out theme. This this part of the Bible is like so chock full of analogies and and representations. And Joseph is a um, representation of Jesus Christ. He he may be he may to, may actually be um, Jesus in the in the regeneration, um, very possible, because we see so many uh, corresponding analogies in the book of Genesis and the story of Joseph in Egypt with um, Jesus Christ. Some of them the the most simple ones being. Um, he had all the he he has the word he has the the bread everyone has to come to him during the famine that's the biggest one that's that's probably the point of the message is that if you read through genesis the last, especially the from the time that uh, joseph ends up in egypt and Potiphar's wife and going into prison and then um, coming out and Pharaoh giving him um, rule over the kingdom because of his ability to interpret dreams, right? And that's why they threw, that's why his brothers threw him in the pit in the first place. Hopefully some of you know the Bible because this isn't, I try to explain the things that, that I think people might not know, but I think sometimes I explain things that people already know and it, and I, and I'm treating you like dummies. So I'm going to try not to do that and move, move quicker through these things that you should probably know. And most, most people that are on this channel probably know. So, um, the interesting part, I'm going to just get to the point instead of like go around and around and around even though I am doing that. Sorry. Um, so Joseph is a, uh, God, I, f I forget the word. He's like a representation of Jesus because of all these um, parallels to the life of Jesus. He was 30 when he reigned, when he started to reign with Pharaoh. Jesus was 30 when he started to reign, um, when he started his ministry in Jerusalem. Um, the bread thing, the, um, shoot, there's a bunch, but I'm going to keep moving cause I don't want to rack my brain. I just want to get to the, what I'm trying to say here. Um, so, um, the thing that interested me and I'm going to just go there, <laughs> Manasseh and Ephraim and I, I didn't know this. I did not know this, and that's why I'm bringing it up because this is probably going to be something that I uh, am going to look more into besides today. But I just wanted to bring it out to you so we can I can point out something about GMS and their weak ass belief that um, the Gentiles can't make it, and all the Gentiles are actually Israelites in a fucking Hellenistic mindset or whatever fucking Negro nonsense that they throw out there about their them being the only Israelites. They're the chosen. They're the elect. It just irritates the fuck out of me, and you probably have seen me get mad before, but I got to keep my blood pressure down. I can't be letting these uh, monkey-brained, imbecile, cotton-picking jackasses um, 
of course, the two dogs are going to... I wouldn't do that, lady. I would not do that. Oh, this doggy showdown right here. The, the guy's dog does not look like... He's like, he's like, yeah, you want to um, let your dog get close enough so my dog can bite his face off? Okay, he's just reactive. He's not mean. So anyway, the point... <laughs> Um, Manessa and Ephraim were born to an Egyptian. <laughs> Let me say that again. Manessa and Ephraim, the sons of Joseph. This is some more proof that GMS is a bunch of fucking weak ass bitch fucks. Excuse my language. Hate those fuckers, man. They totally distort the Bible. They distort people's minds. They just they just fuck up everything. So if you're a dumb nigga and you're listening to those guys, you need to get out of it. Get off the street. Get off the corner. Stop talking about fucking black power and anyhow. Um so in Genesis. It talks about all the Israelites went into Egypt under Joseph. Israelites who entered Egypt, and these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt, Jacob and his sons, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, the sons of Reuben, the sons of Simeon, and the sons of Levi, um, Gershom, Korath, Merari, the sons of Judah, Onan, I'm just going to read through these quick. Hezron, the sons of Iskar, um, Tola, Tola, Job, Shimron, the sons of Zebulon, Elon, Jahil. These be the sons of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, Dinah, the daughter. Souls of his sons and his daughters were thirty and three. The souls of his Sons and daughters were 33. What does that represent, people? 33 is when Jesus was put on the cross. 33. So when you look at that number, 33 of the family of Israel came into Egypt. I don't know what you want to do with that, but that is... That's how it relates. There's, um, yeah, the numbers mean things. So anyway, I'm going to continue so I don't get stuck on that. Um, the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to Leah, his daughter, and these she bare unto Jacob, even 16 souls. Zilpah. Um, the sons of Asher, Ishui, Sarai, their sister, Bariah, um, the sons of Gad, and then it goes in on verse 19 of Genesis 47. It says, um, the sons of Rachel, Jacob's favorite. And see, being that I'm a Benjamin, I've paid close attention to Joseph, Benjamin, Rachel, um, if some of you don't know, the tomb of Rachel is still on the outskirts of Bethlehem. The tomb of Rachel is a venerated monument or whatever in Israel, right outside of Bethlehem where um, Benjamin was born. But anyway, <coughs> this was interesting. Um, and under Joseph... Joseph and Benjamin were the two favorites of Rachel and Jacob. Jacob loved Rachel the best. He put all his put all his effort into getting Rachel. And so the two sons that came out of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. And it says, the sons of Rachel, Jacob's wife, Joseph and Benjamin. Jacob's wife. 
And unto Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim. And unto Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, which Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On, bear on to him. Manasseh and Ephraim were Gentile children. They were half-breeds. They were born of a Gentile wife. So Joseph being the representation of Jesus, he's the one with all the power. He's the one under the Heavenly Father. You may look at Pharaoh as a representation of the Heavenly Father, even though that's just a shadow idea he controls all the land and he raises up his son Jesus Christ who is Joseph to give out the bread to cook, to prevent famine to bring the families together everybody had to everybody in the land had to go to Egypt to get bread at this time cuz the famine was worldwide. Everybody had to come to Joseph. And I could probably find the scripture, but um, I'm not prepared like Chuck Missler to jump. I don't have all these scriptures already written down, and I'm just going to have to have you believe what I'm saying. And if you want to, you can look it up yourself. It's not something that's not known. Um, so what we're seeing here is a precursor to the end days. We all have to go back onto Joseph. Not necessarily Egypt because at the end we're all going to be together and it's going to be a new Jerusalem, a new earth comes down. We're going to it's going to be new. It's not going to be Egypt, it's but it that's where the bread's going to be. That's where the where you're going to get fed. That's where everyone else is going to be, even the even the Gentiles. This is this is the type of stuff that, even though GMS and these fucking black Hebrew fucking idiots, they claim to be Israel, they never talk about Israel. For real, they never actually read about the families. And that's what pisses me off because I am Israel, and they motherfuckers, man. Sorry. A little coffee. Let's get back to what we were saying. So, Manasseh and Ephraim were born of this priests. This was a high ranking Gentile. Um, and then, what's interesting, it says, unto Joseph was born Manasseh and Ephraim, and then the next verse is, and the sons of Benjamin were Bela, Becher, Ger Jera, Nahaman, Ehi, Rosh, Muppam, Muppam and Huppam and Ard. Let's see what Huppam means. Just because that's my tribe. Um, just says Huffam. And then it goes to Numbers 26, 39. Do we want to look? Might as well. That's what we're doing, Bible teaching. Who is this Huff, Huff, Huffam that they want us to know? This guy named uh, his Huff, Huffam, Numbers 26, 39. What is so important about him that they want us to know him? That's how you read the Bible. You that's how you study. Twenty six thirty nine, and it says of Shephum, the family of the Shephamites, and Huffam, the family of the Huffamites. Ooh. Hmm. Let's see what the family of the Shephamites is probably not going to tell us anything. It's just a big circle jerk. Um. Sheph. Shit. It's funny because the word. 
chef, it, it turns into an E here. Chef, chef, um, chef, um, chef, um, chef, um, chef, um, chef, uh, fun, chef, uh, fun, ah. chef, chef, um. <laughs> whatever. It turns into an E like, um, like the angels, seraphim. They make a they make a deal of it. Shuffle the family of the Shuffanites and Huffam. All I can say is it probably is a reference. Somehow it got mistranslated. It it meant an of this Benjamite family that were angelic. Yeah. Probably probably has something to do with angelic host. Anyhow, let's move on. Um, these are the sons of Rachel, which were born to Jacob. All the souls were 14. How many years did it take? How many years did it take Jacob to win Rachel from, from Laban? 14 he gets one he gets one soul and see that's what's interesting here it's talking about souls it doesn't say sons daughters it says souls all the souls were 14 and the sons of Dan these are the sons of Bilhah which Laban gave unto Rachel his daughter and she bare these unto Jacob all those souls were seven. How many how many years did so what happened was when um when Laban fooled Jacob, he boned Leah first and Leah had all these kids. Let's see where it says Leah. These be the sons of Leah, which she bare, the daughter Dinah. Um, these are the sons of Zilpah, 16 souls. And the souls of Leah were 33. So between, get this, between Rachel, these are the things that if you're not, if you're not really interested in the Bible, it's not going to mean anything to you. So I'm, I can see why some of you are like, this is the most boring Bible teaching ever. Well, if you're not really into the Bible, it's going to be boring. I'm into it. I love it. All the all the souls that were given to Jacob and Rachel between her and Bilhah. Fourteen souls. Fourteen souls. Under Rachel. And seven souls under her concubine, Bilhah. What's 14 and 7? 21. What's that? 7 times 3. I'll say this again. Some of you don't understand, and I don't even understand completely. Part of what the Lord let me know who I was, I'm kind of choppy today. I don't know why. I um, was crying yesterday a little bit over the narcissist. I couldn't believe it. I was crying over you, Melanie, if you're listening. I probably lost you already. You're like, what the fuck? Um, yeah, I heard that song. Suavecito, baby, and it made me cry. Because, baby, I love you. Suavecito. 
I never met a girl like you in my in my life. <laughs> Made me cry, baby. Um Anyway, 21. So when I was um taking pictures of the clouds, one of the first revelations that I got out of the cloud pictures had a 73 at the bottom of it, right in the middle. It had all this other prophecy in the picture, the blood up to the horse's bridle, an angel, the land, Nimrod looking over Israel. It had, I don't know, it pisses me off when I think about the sky pictures because I don't know where they're at. But anyway, um, here we go again. I'm getting fucked up because this is the type of stuff that still pops up. Why is it that the children of Rachel and Joseph were a total of seven and three, 21? And why is it that in that picture, 73 was at the bottom and 73 is Psalm 73, the first Psalm of the third book of Psalms, a Psalm of Asaph that, you know, I may not be able to tell you when the rapture is going to happen or this or that, but tell you what, something big is going to happen <laughs> um, through me, about me, from me. I don't know how, how to say it because of me. I don't and it's, it's hard to, uh, sometimes it's hard. I just realized that 21 souls, <clears throat> three groups of seven, seven, three. So anyway, I'm going to move on. Suavecito. Let me see what I got. Wow.